How's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm just switching from my speakerphone to my car. Okay, okay. Nice. That works out. Sweet. Well, I'm going to record video then for my channel. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, you do uh, a podcast every uh, every Friday or Saturday? Yes, sir. I do one every Friday, and uh, it's just kind of hard though uh, with my work schedule because um, I usually work six nights a week. I work overnight from six to six, um, so I also do like emergency response at the airport. So it's 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 hard it's hard to get an episode in. So it's, it's been stressful. <laughs> well, I can see that. Yeah. Well, well, thanks for taking right, the time uh, to speak with me, bro. No, I appreciate you coming on. I really do. Um, how, how do you say your last name? Rene. Right, Rene uh, Gauth Gauthier? Rene Goche. Goche? Oh, okay. I like that. <laughs> yeah, dude. A little <laughs> French, but I, I don't speak French. <laughs> All right, so um, we'll go ahead and get started. And uh, So is there anything that... It's like off limits if you don't feel, uh, feel comfortable talking about. Um, I don't think so. I'm a I'm an open book. You you can ask okay. me anything. Okay. So um, all right. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um. So what's going on, Renee? So um, why don't you tell us a little bit of a, a little bit about yourself, a little background, and then we'll we'll jump into it. Well, I'm a I'm a class one driver. I ha I got my license when I was 18. So I did uh, that three month schooling when I was 18 years old um, in Oshawa, Ontario. And uh, okay. I was I was pretty much born and raised there. And uh, yeah, I have uh, three years of pipe fitting experience with uh, UA Local 853 in uh, Ontario and uh, about a year and a half there and an, a year and a half in Alberta with uh, local 488. They're out of Edmonton, but I was in the Grand Prairie branch. And uh, yeah, I, I switched back to my pipe fitting after uh, I got a journeyman crane operating ticket for like around 2015. Oh, okay. Yeah, 2015 and the oil crashed and then uh, things got really slow. So I started pipe fitting yeah. again. But uh yeah, I, I've been slowly just trying to like move, move around, and just get away from my family, and um, yeah, yeah. Like when I was 27, I was engaged, and one of the last things my ex told me was get away from your parents, and I didn't really know what that meant. And then I met someone um, in Alberta, and uh, w when I was 30, she kind of like talked me a little bit, and things didn't seem right. So I, I just been kind of like trying to figure out what was going on and I was really good friends with my dispatcher when I was operating crane yeah. and uh, we would go for for like brunch at uh, this place called Brown Social House and we would go to the movies and stuff and uh, my friend Mark and he told me that my my father called into work and I like why would my father be calling into my work Right, like, like yeah. I'm 30 years old. It doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, then I started having people that were Hell's Angels associates, like following me around, and like, I, like I kept on moving, and things just didn't seem to be working out right. And uh, yeah, so here I am, and. In Victoria, and uh, my anxiety's flaring up right now talking about this. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> don't worry, this is a, this is a safe place. So, um, real quick, um, on your ex account, you have tortured, ostracized, mobbed, wrongfully terminated, discriminated, police witch hunt, and then of course the stuff that happened that happened with the Ontario Hell's Angels. So, um, let's jump to the very beginning. When, when exactly did all this stuff, uh, this stuff start uh, start happening? 
Well, with everything I know now, I feel like it's it's happened ever since ever since grade six when I was raped, and it's yeah. it's slowly been trickling down ever since then. And it was it was in camp at Camp Samac in northern Oshawa, Ontario, and my father and my neighbor were there, and uh, I ne I never I never talked about it. Yeah. And uh, I I've always been surrounded by people that when I grew up just, I've always been like a hard worker. I've been working since I was 15, like two jobs. My first job was at, was at McDonald's and yeah. uh, always been like a fat kid. And just like that kind of like, I've never been a drinker. I'd never did drugs. I, I smoked weed for the very first time when I was 27. So I've always been straight edge and just like a really hard, just a really okay. hard worker. If, if you ask anyone that's, they would probably say unanimously. That's what they would say is Renee's a hard worker. So I, I yeah. like, I never talked about, it. I just, just put my head down, just like, just keep on pushing forward. But so those people that from like my friends from elementary school and high school, I, they ended up all being like drug dealers and just mixed up with like the wrong crowd. And, and I just, it was kind of like normal to me. So I never really thought of it until I started moving around when I was 27, when I broke up with my mm -hmm. ex fiance. And, uh, yeah. So, and, and whenever you say that, that it was uh, kind of like normalized, um, you know, the drug did in, um, does, is that like a, or is it or was a family business? I, I, I didn't know until like when I was older, man. I don't like, it, it wasn't really talked about or anything like that. So I, I was more, more, more or less kept around because of who my family is and because of my size. So, but, but like any parties or anything like this guy, Jake Napolitano, um, when I found out like, uh, like when I was 17, I started dating a girl from, from McDonald's and her name's Tasha. And, uh, yeah. like, like we did for like six years and, and, uh, yeah. And, uh, her family was, is, is like really special to me and, uh. Like just thinking about her dad can kind of like make me really emotional. He's like the best friend I, like I never had, and uh, yeah. like helped me like like so. Just because like ever since I was like a lot younger, I never really I was never really home much. So just because my mom, and just so she was always just popping pills and shit, and just always angry. So yeah. I was always just living at other people's houses and which was really like really amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, just, uh, yeah. Like any, any, any time there was like a party or whatever, like I remember like, like Jake, like, I've known him since grade one and, uh, like they would think it, it was funny to, um, to groom a police officer's daughter at the age of 15 and feed her cocaine. So things that, uh, things, things, yeah, and he works at a gym in, in the Austral plant now. And things were, and, and then Tasha ended up, I remember getting off work because I was working nights, like driving, I was driving for, for Petra Canada. I was driving tanker B trains, downtown Toronto. Yeah. All the terminals are, are on uh, Keel and Finch area. So uh, I, I would, I'll be working 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. Monday to Saturday. So just like, like once, once the stock market closes at, at 4 PM, um, I would end up either starting work at 4 PM or starting work after, after midnight, because you would, um, like, like, so the customer I would deliver to like a lot of small, like mom and pop gas stations and they don't make much money off of the gas. Right. So if they're ordering 20,000 or 50,000 liters of fuel, they would want to try to get the best deal possible. Right. So if the stock market was going, was going down, the next day like they would want to wait right um and try to get the best price so then i would have to load and make sure the the bill of lading is at 1201 of when i badged yeah. it, like say shell or patch can or so right anyways i remember it was like really slow which is rare because everyone always needs gas but i got off early at like midnight and she was going through like a weird phase and she's like uh you know i just i don't have any friends or whatever and uh, i'm like well hang out with uh with Jake's sister and she was older. Right. And, uh, 
I couldn't get a hold of her like one night and she didn't have her phone, which is, I mean, everyone has her phone always on them, right? And uh, Jake's new house from when we were kids, he moved to like a north part of like Curtis area, like a newer house. And he had, yeah. and he lived on, on like a dead end, right? And uh, I never ever went down, like so I ended up getting off work, but I couldn't get a hold of her. And I ended up uh, going down like a dead end road and I never went down at the end of his road ever for all these years. And her car was parked at the very end. And I'm like, what? why is her car parked here? I just like did like a Yui. And I look at her car and her phone's in the car. I'm like, who leaves her phone in the car? So I just end up, because, so I, like, I, I would have uh, have dinner at Jake's house and her family, like his family was like really close to me and his dad was awesome and buys pizza and stuff. And um, yeah. really, really good people. But uh, I remember her being in like, uh, in like the backyard there and, uh, Jake bragging about like that situation about feeding cocaine to some some 15 year old minor police officer's daughter and uh, I ended up finding out because he worked at like Tim Hortons there um, on Wentworth in, in Oshawa there and I remember a friend of a friend of a friend in, in high school ended up telling me that they ended up like hooking up so she cheated on me with him my best friend since like grade one yeah and it just kept on happening over and over again and then my ex fiance cheated on me with like my best friend Jesse from um, from high school, and now now my father is best friends with Jesse. Like one of the last one of the last words he told me, my father was, "I love Jesse." I'm like, how like how can you say that? I haven't talked to my dad in like ten years. Yeah. So yeah, it's just been like a lot of a lot of trauma, and I've just been like not really just just moving away and just moving and working and working. And, and, um, when I was working for a uh, UA local eight, five, three, um, pipe fitting, one of my job, like I, th one of my first jobs, my first was in Markham, Ontario. And, uh, my dad had this like side hustle business where, cause he also, he, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but he, he delivers fuel. That's how I got into the industry. Okay. So the government ended up paying cause I was on EI cause things could, just could, could never work out for me. I, like, I, I don't know why, but, uh, so the government has always been like amazing, like su supporting me for like with EI and they end up paying for my three month, like, uh, like driving course. It was like 7,500 bucks or something like that paid for. Yeah. So thank you government. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, um, yeah. And, and I, I was at top of my class when I, when I, well, like when I, when I passed that for like shifting and stuff like that, and I ended up getting like a scholarship to Molson Brewery in Etobicoke, right off the highway on 401. A massive, like, uh, I think when, when I was working there, that's when Coors ended up buying out Molson Brewery. I remember we ha we ended up having like a massive, uh, massive lunch brought in. I'm like, wow, this is the best job ever. And I would like fuel up trucks. It was like, yeah, it was like 18 bucks an hour. It was like really good money back then, like full benefits and stuff. And the people were really nice yeah. and it was like a really wide verse of like culture of people and and uh they had like a gym that was just opened up and built by i think it was like the canadian women's hockey team or something like that and it would, so we ended up having like this lunch it was brought in by boston pizza i've never seen so much food they brought in servers and free beer it was it was just amazing i'm like where am i working but my father ended up yeah and this was when i was 18 my father ended up convincing me to quit that job and uh yeah so when I was like 30 years old, I was working in the old oil I was talking to some old guy and I was telling him about this, right? He's like, why would you ever leave that job with a full pension? I'm like thinking to myself, yeah, my, my, my father taught me that. Always give me bad advice. Anyways, <laughs> kind of, I, I have ADHD, so there's a lot of scroll moments here. I'm, I'm jumping all over the place. Oh, no, I, I, I work my girlfriend. I, this is, this is your show. This is your episode. You know, speak however, uh, however you want, speak whatever time you need. Oh, that's, that's really nice of you, bro. So I think, so, so my father had this, um, this like side hustle of like selling gas. He would sell like a hundred jerry cans of all, like all these local people and stuff like that. And he charged, I don't know, like, I think it was like 10 bucks or five bucks a can or sometimes give it to, to people for free. He would do this thing where, um, like you would just like time it. Like when you're, when you're offloading it, usually like you have like uh, three, uh, three compartments per trailer. So six compartments. 15,000, 5,000, 10,000, a total of 60,000, usually load up to 57,000 for like weight. You only have like a certain amount of weight driving around. 
So um, when you're at the loading terminal, like Esso or Shell or Petra Canada, you can you can start or stop the machine. And if you know everyone up at the at like the top like building, whatever, that like an alarm might go off. But you can like it, depending on like how much the customer like wants, whatever, you can like put like five thousand liters, and it not like be noticeable. Or you can like hide like 250 liters, which is like a lot of gas, but you like, you can't yeah. like, so like, like when you dip a tank, when you dip a 50,000 liter tank, it's just like a, like a wooden pole, like, like a wooden, like measuring stick. Right. And like you write down the numbers. So it, like your, your opening dip and your end dip, 250 liters is like, you can't notice that. Right. So there's like very few gas stations, like a small gas station that's like getting fuel like every other day and if someone's like checking their numbers and they're like is on their numbers 24 7 which 99 percent of the people don't do so anyways like this is all the things like my dad told me right so he would sell gas on like the side like 10 bucks and like 10 bucks a can anyways so this is at taunton tire um i guess it's a curtis so like so he so he would park there and the owner of taunton tire they end up building a new shop in the back. Uh, two brothers, his wife's sister's husband. He's a pipe fitter for UA Local 853. And when I was working at Markham, Ontario, um, he was my fitter. I'm like, how, how is this? like So, so uh, always people that know my dad, right? And, yeah. I, and I was working there. And uh, so this guy, Tony Bruno, he was one of the fitters there like one day and we're, and we're like, we're on break and we're going back to work and a hammer falls from the roof. It was like a 14 story building falls from the roof and lands like a foot away from me on the ground floor. And all you hear is this bang. And I'm like, what the heck looking around? Tony's in front of me and it took like a chunk, like, I don't know, like two and a half inch chunk out of the concrete. And uh, Tony was freaking out. I didn't really know what to think about that. And I, we were tr we were just waiting in line to try to get in, into the elevator to go back up on like the seventh or tenth floor. And um, yeah, things like that just kept on happening. And when I was operating craning in in the oil field, um, one of the guys was uh, was bribed. I found out like just like recently that uh, he he was bribed with this guy Jamie from Kamloops, uh, BC to drive a F-350 pickup truck when I was on one of my first crane operating jobs and I was junior crane operator. We like ended up rigging in the crane and we went back to the hotel. He was driving uh, driving the pickup since I drove the crane unit. And he ended up like totaling the F-350 and hitting another F-350, the passenger side where I was sitting and totaled both pick both pickup trucks that both had a, like, a, like a moose bar. I think that's the only thing that saved my life. Yeah. The window smashed and the door wouldn't open and uh yeah not a scratch on me i don't know how that happened but things like that just kept on happening and uh and you, and you think it was all a bit like a like a murder attempt or something i mean like, my father like seems to be involved with these situations and thing like things with work just like uh, i don't know man I, I can't speak on other people. I just just try to explain like what happens to you, and these things just aren't really coincidences. Yeah. Like it just seems to. Yeah. yeah, especially if they keep happening over and over. Yeah, bro. You know, with, with people knowing, you know, the same person, your dad. Um, if we can, uh, can we get a little bit of background uh, about your dad so we could kind of like build a picture? Uh, so, uh, I didn't know my dad until I was five. I guess when I was born, he ended up like killing someone with like a flashlight or something like that oh damn yeah so so he went to jail for like five years so yeah and uh I, I, this was we we're living in scarborough ontario and, and i didn't know until recently until talking to my mom that uh um i guess like my uncle who like robbed a brinks truck so I, i'm not i'm not quite oh. sure like where but yeah so ever since then he's been in like the mental health system ever since that i think yeah. he, like he was like talked into like doing some stupid shit and uh and i i didn't know but the building we lived in he lived like above that building and i just have like memories of like my mom like 
putting a pillow over my face and like me like grabbing her rings and stuff like that when I was a kid and her like leaving me from like, long, for like long periods of time and like I just remember like going through the fridge and grabbing like cheese slices and like making like play-doh and just trying to find food and stuff like that and uh yeah she, she would she would be with her like that guy like I guess my uncle I only met him like twice I think and uh yeah she would just be popping pills and be with him and uh yeah so just always unsupervised and just never taught anything just be around just that kind of thing it's like surprising like I never I never got into drugs or drinking I don't know how that that ever worked out <laughs> but um <laughs> but yeah I know yeah she, she would just always have always be popping pills man and and uh I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I never talked about it because people always have, like, a worse life than me, right? People are always, some people don't, are, like, disabled or missing limbs or th not healthy or have yeah. health issues and stuff. And, but, but, even, but even still, I mean, it's also healthier for you to, you know, come out and talk about this, you know, especially for other people who, you know, say are going through, a, you know, maybe a similar situation and, you know, they're, you know, going through it maybe in a room with the, with the lights off, you know, can't talk, depressed. You know, and, you know, to see someone like you come out, you know, and tell their story, you know, it's going to encourage them, you know, like, you know, maybe I can't speak up and talk about this, you know, kind of free yourself. Bro, if if I can help some people right now, it would be that you, if you're listening to this and things might not be going right and you just tell like a family member, your, your best friend or someone that you've known your whole life and you just, you're always telling them stuff and things just don't work out that that might be by design you 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 might be backstabbed by the ones that you think love you the most like they might be like screwing you so you don't have any opportunity or because like the hell's angels and stuff like they don't talk about it right yeah i remember uh i thought of like a good friend of mine like he tried like t like he, he got really close to my father and he tried to like tell me hey hey like we don't talk about it. just like fight club the movie with brad pitt we don't talk about Fight Club. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the Hells Angels, they don't talk about the Hells Angels, right? Like, you know? Oh, so, so is your dad, your dad's in the, Hell, the Hells Angels? I, I, I don't know, but I, I just have been around, like, now, like, I've, like, people I know that have small businesses and stuff like that, they're now showing, like, patch, patch photos of the Hells Angels, like, oh, oh, okay. like, this one guy in, like, Brooklyn, like, Whippy. In Durham region like where I'm from uh, uh, like Austria is part of Durham region and like like now that I'm yeah. older people are getting like back tattoos of like across like their back of the shoulder Jesse has it some yeah. people at, from like elementary school have it now and it's all like the same back tattoo so it doesn't say Hell's Angels but it's the same general giant back tattoo from one shoulder to the yeah. other shoulder and you know, tattoos are often sign of like a gang. Even though it might be, it can be, it can say or a, be a picture of anything. You know, like if you know, you know. So, yeah, yeah. If 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 things aren't going right for you, man, like like move and don't tell anyone, man. Try to like. It's a small world, but at the end of the day, like you you can move somewhere and and you, like you might feel really depressed or have like the wrong feelings but things can change like change really quickly you know and, and there's a lot of amazing people yeah. out there and if you just change your environment um and, tr and just try to figure it out because i think i think humans are really strong and uh there's a lot of support out there and like the internet i don't know what i would do without the comment section of like the internet you just read comments and just people and you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, i mean <laughs> i mean <laughs> there's so many amazing videos out there so like you're never alone but yeah for sure yeah just uh for anyone struggling just uh just keep like don't give up just keep on pushing forward so yeah i mean you know the, the same thing for me you know i went through my whole stage of you know depression and um and uh i guess drug abuse and um it, it took me the one of the main things you know change you know people places and things you know so a lot of people want me to move back to you know where i'm originally from houston but 
you know, it's like, nah, you know, I don't want you to, I already know what's out there, and, you know, like, separating, separating yourself from that kind of environment is, like, the biggest, like, you, you get the biggest peace out of it. You know, like, right now I'm at peace, you know, I have, I have no worries, I have no stress. Well, I mean, I stress because of work and stuff like that, but, you know, I don't, I don't have to, I'm not in that environment to where I'm most likely to fail. You know, I'm, I'm in a different environment, a safe environment, environment that I know I can control now. So, and how uh, do you feel now? Jump in, you feel better now? Oh, I feel, right. I feel Are you, Oh, yeah, I feel free. <laughs> I feel you, free for sure. Are you sober now? Uh, I mean, I drink, but I don't do drugs anymore. <laughs> nice. Yeah, because that, that, was, that was the main thing. It takes a lot of strength, man. Like it takes a lot of strength. Yeah, like addiction is is really hard to get over, you know. Yeah, and you know sometimes it's still a fight, but I mean, I got I got into enough trouble to where, you know, multiple times where it's like you know it's not fun no more, you know, and and I know if if I'm in that situation, I know what the consequences are going to be and what I'm going to lose if I do that. So that's also you know a, a big thing. It's not worth it, bro. Yeah, it definitely isn't. You know, you, your health is so important. There's um, someone from high school. He uh, he he made me find fitness, jogging and running, and I've always been like a chubby guy, and uh, yeah. um, that uh, fitness really changed my life, bro. Like uh, the runner's high, sitting in the sauna, it, like. I know Joe Rogan always, always like preaches about like the sauna and stuff of like that. I like having like a trucker background, always listen to podcasts and stuff. Right. But, <laughs> um, uh, you know, just getting started, just, just like just that feeling of, uh, of sitting in the sauna for like 20, 30 minutes and drinking water, that can be a, like a small step in the right direction of just changing your life, you know? Yeah, for sure. All right. So, um, I'm kind of going through your page here and, um, February seventh, twenty twenty four. You um, you said that you were attacked by a bio weapon. Oh, bro! Can you uh, can you explain what happened with that? So I I've been like on the run across four provinces for for like almost ten years now, and uh, okay. um, my, like my father. We we ended up going to court because he ended up hitting my mom, but I think it was like set up to like kind of. Like entrap me in some bullshit, and uh, yeah. I ended up going to jail for like four days. And it's like, like, how do you like once you're in jail? How do you get out of jail? Which is kind of tricky. And if it turns out that if you know a priest, that like they can get you out, or if you have a lawyer, well, I don't have a lawyer. And uh, what? Well, it's not a priest. Yeah, and, I, and and like I guess in Canada, like you can't call cell phones from like the jail phone. I think you can only call like landlines, and like who has yeah, landlines yeah, memorized? Like, like, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so. So I'm like, how the heck? So it like a bunch of inmates. He's like, this is this your first time in jail? I'm like, yeah. So inmates help me call someone to get me out, and I guess there's like a bail program you can call and ask for it. So I'm getting out of jail, and like um, there was a bunch of marks on my hand because my father ended up like hitting me, and uh, so like it all got thrown out. He ended up like a minute hitting my mom and stuff like that. So ever since then, I haven't talked to my dad. It's like ten years ago, and uh, ever since then, so I ended up renting a renting a room, which is in Lindsay, Ontario, which is where the jail was. And I started like plumbing and stuff and, um, dri like driving truck. And I, like, I keep, I keep on getting wrongfully terminated. And when I was living in this room on nine, Sus nine Sussex street in Lindsay, like downtown, um, I was renting a room and stuff like that. And people were, there was like three or four people and it was all like older, like, like men and women, but, like, just reti retired in their fifties. And I'm like, okay, this is a safe place. And it just ended up changing. Like half of them all moved out and like a bunch of young people like came in and they all were just tied up in like, in that like, whole like drinking and cocaine, like lifestyle. People like when yeah. I was going, like when I was off, like driving dump truck, people were breaking into my room and I, I was like pissing blood and like a bunch, like a bunch oh, of other, like, yeah. And like, I was working at this place in like Fenland Falls, and um, my 
my employer ended up taking out the, the manifold bolts off of, off of the engine. So when I was driving truck, I was like breathing in, having nosebleeds. I ended up buying a carbon monoxide, like, um, detector. I'm like, something's not like going on here. And it was a reading like a 45, which is like much like, I guess like an hour of breathing in, like anything over like a certain, like, uh, like PPM is like dangerous. And I was like, like working all week and like having these massive nosebleeds and shit like that. Like things just kept on like, like not going right for me. And, uh, yeah. So I like if, if you're pissing or shitting blood and people are poisoning and breaking into your room and poisoning your food, like that's technically a bioweapon, right? Like a bio agent. So like ever since then I've been having problems with the hell's angels. I'm trying to get away from that and get away from my father and it just keeps on falling. So, so is that why you're, you're like going through different states to get away from that? Yeah, so I just keep on getting further and further away from Ontario. And um, so so when I was in Saskatoon, I ended up buying um, a 2017 Buick LaCrosse, brand new. And uh, um, I wasn't talking to my father, but as kind of like a, like, like a, I don't know, like, like a, like a middle figure to him, I ended up working where he was working. I, I, I opened up a small business account in Ontario and he was working for Pioneer, um, Pioneer Energy, um, parking on Keel Cross from York University there. And like a bunch of brokers worked there and I, I got a job there. And so when I was working with, with my father, when he told me to quit Molson and Coors Brewery, he gave me like the rates for, for all like the money you, you would make and stuff of like that. And, uh, I was making like, Oh no. Oh, Oh shoot. My car just went on. Transfer to Tesla. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. My, my Tesla went into sleep mode. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, um, he had to give me the rate. So I, I would only make like $180 a, a day in this and that. And, uh, yeah. before my grandmother passed away, she told me that my, my father was like putting money aside for my, for my schooling. Well, I never went to school and <laughs> yeah. so I, I don't know where he was keeping that money. So like, and then he would always like, oh, like <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but like I was always saving money and stuff, but he would like borrow money out. He would borrow thousands of dollars off me and tell me not, 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 not to tell my mom and stuff. I don't know. Always, always an issue. But, uh, anyways, I, I started working, um, when I move, when I, when I have my German crane operating ticket, I moved back to Ontario from, from Alberta and I ended up working in the same place as him, but we never spoke. And I just worked alongside like some other brokers and we parked in the same yard, but we never talked ever like not once. And I never talked about it. Never, ne never told the brokers, but I ended up like making like $450 a day, twice as much as I used to make hauling fuel. Right. Yeah. So I ended up buying a brand new Buick that's, that's <laughs> and, uh, and I had a 2015 Ford focus I bought in Grand Prairie. And, uh, when I started getting, getting poisoned and stuff for that, I'm like, I'm like, like the hell's angels just keep on following me. Right. So I'm like, I'm gonna, like, I plan on like living in my car back then. So I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like start living it. I guess oh, I'm stirring. I'm so just like I'm shaking. I have so much anxiety. I'm really sorry. No, don't so, worry about it, man. <laughs> so I ended up buying a bigger car and living in that. But it turned out that he talked to that like to those bro to those brokers and ended up firing me for no reason. So uh, I so I got fired. Didn't have a job. They're like, oh, I thought I thought you knew people and this and that. And I'm like, like my father parks in the yard. So my my father's backstabbing me, slandering me to everyone wrongfully terminated over and over again everywhere I go and um so ever since then so then I moved to Saskatoon I was working at Pepsi Pepsi in Saskatoon and the same thing kept on happening yeah. and uh um I have like a bunch of videos on my Twitter and uh like my boss lying about customers I ended up going after my boss fired me at Pepsi in his office I ended up going to all the customers and the, and the customers were like I didn't say that that's not what happened and then since then I, I made that like Twitter account I think like in 2019 
And I've just been trying to upload and document and document over and over again. I'm like, what's going on? And when I went to court, um, when, when the case with my father ended up getting thrown out, when he ended up like admitting assaulting like me and, and, and my mom, the judge gave me like a little bit of a tip. And she, and she told me like, Renee, she says, uh, like, did you know that your father has, and there's a detective prior to this court case, prior to everything, did you know that your father has been talking to a detective? I'm like, wait, what? So I, like, it never made sense, but she gave me that like little, a little bit of a tidbit. Right. And I'm like, why, why, like, what the fuck's going on? And this is why I say like the police witch hunt. So like when I was in Saskatoon, I had the RCMP brag about like I was just I was living in my car and I was just moving around moving around and uh even in Ontario before I moved it moved into Saskatoon um I think there was there was like some damage on like the back right and like corner of of my Buick and I feel that people were for sneaking up behind me and like inserting something into the back of my car and spraying like spray foam I know it sounds far-fetched. I, I don't have any proof besides me making videos uh, like of this like yellow, nauseous smelling stuff that would be built up and that was rock hard from my nose. And I was, yeah. I was spending hundreds of dollars and I've spent thousands on 3M filters and respirators that I would be always be wearing on like just to protect myself and like leaving my car running, having the air, like the fan going. I know it sounds like wild, but just always moving around and, and like when I would move there would be like people behind me and like I can't have eye, like eyes in the back of my head right so um like that's the reason why I ended up buying a Tesla because it got to the point where I would leave to go to work and like I would be storing water and food in my car and I'm like why am I still pissing blood like what the fuck is going on and I would yeah. notice like things in my car would be all messed up and stuff like that and I noticed like the battery in my car of, of my trunk would be like disconnected. Things weren't like put back the same way of when, like when I left it. So I ended up buying a bunch of ratchet straps from Costco and I ended up ratchet strapping my, my two rear doors shut. I ratchet strapped those shut and it messed up the plastic. I just like as tight as they can go. So you couldn't open the doors from the outside. I ratchet strapped the passenger seat door. I, I, yeah, I ratchet strapped the door to the passenger seat. So you couldn't open that door. I ended up ratchet strapping the trunk, pulled off all the, all the plastic and there was a bunch of holes and I, I fished through like the ratchet strap, ratchet strap the trunk closed so you couldn't get at, at the battery and the only way you can get into the car if you like broke in um, is from the driver door. I ended up buying one of those like hunting trail cameras that you can get like a, like a 4G plan and has like a sensor for like, uh, um, for like spawning like wildlife and then putting that in in my cup holder facing like the door. <laughs> so, so, I, so when I was at work, I could, I could, I could, uh, connect to that, um, to the hunting camera and that helped me. But yeah, so like it got like, so, so, so I ended up leaving. Oh, so, oh yeah. And then I couldn't get insurance in Ontario. All, all of a sudden I've been living there my whole life. I couldn't get insurance. So, so like, like I didn't really know then, like, like being wrongfully terminated, like were people complaining, right? Like question mark, like, like, was that happening? I don't know. So all of a sudden I couldn't get insurance and I live in my car. So I, I was literally fr like for, like forced out of the province of Ontario and I have a class one, like that's my trade out of Ontario. So that's why I ended up moving to, to like so much has happened, bro. I'm sorry for all like the swirl moments, but that's why I ended up moving to Saskatoon. I'm like, where can I go? That's like completely fucking random like Saskatoon seems like a nice yeah. place I'll just move fucking there so <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like, like what could possibly go wrong so yeah so then I like I got a job at Pepsi and then just yeah I just just fake complaints like I, I like I proved like my boss just end up like treating me differently um I have a video on on my ex account uh, of him lying me me getting fired and me going like that same, like within like 30 minutes, going to a bunch of customers and them giving me faulty equipment and stuff and just like self, like, just like, like sabotage stuff and just anything to kind of like think not, things to put blame on me. Hey, Renee's the problem, but I'm not the problem. Like 
people are back. Like, I just can't get away from it. So I ended up moving so, back so to that video, Sorry, what? No, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, so in that video where uh, you caught your boss lying, um, well, uh, what, what exactly was said? So, uh, I haven't seen oh, the video yet. Oh, um, okay. So if you search, if, you, if you're on my page and you go like a search and type in Pepsi, I think the video pops up. Um, or if you go to my likes and scroll down, there's like 400 videos on my likes. If you scroll down all the way to the bottom, there's like some screenshots of the dates of when that was posted. And like, I have like 11,000 like posts, right? So I know there's a lot of like me documenting my life on me being tortured is just, I'm just trying to like, just trying to like document it. Otherwise, like people are just trying to say like, I'm the problem. Like, like it's, it's so easy to say, oh, that person's on drugs. Well, I'm not on drugs. And I don't have mental health issues besides ADHD, which isn't a problem. So that's why I'm like, I have yeah. to start, I have to start documenting this. And, and, um, like USB storage and cloud storage is like really expensive. Right. So I'm like, I'll just upload it on like Facebook or, or like Twitter. Right. Like back then. So, so my boss like said that, uh, the, I forget what it was. It was a couple of years ago. Uh, like the customer had a problem with you. So. I'm like, okay. And he's like, there's a bunch of other things. And then, um, he said, well, you're going to be let go anyways in like a couple of weeks. Cause I guess I had like a six month contract. That's what they do. And it's really hard to get on with Pepsi. And I try to get on with Coca-Cola, but Coca-Cola is really hard to get onto. And, um, so he ended up like letting me go early. And, and I remember leaving his office and I was video recording and I was going through like the lunchroom and one of like the main trainers, it, it, it's, it's hard. Like he, it's almost like he was about to give me the middle finger, like F you, like he was listening into like review, but he didn't. And I was like, Oh, yeah. it's so close. Right. And, um, <laughs> like, and like, as I'm leaving, like, uh, a guy, Kelly that, that works at Pepsi, he had like a giant, like Timmy's cup walking in the door. I like, as I'm walking out as, as my manager, uh, what's his name? I forget his name, my, my manager's name. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, as he's walking in, everyone's all relaxed. Everyone has a job working full time. They, they need people. It's really busy, but Renee can't work there for some reason. For some reason it's quote unquote, quote, like my fault. I did something wrong. There's complaints. So then I ended up going to, to these customers. One was like, it was like a convenience store and the customer's like, Oh, that, well, that was my father. And like, no, that, that never happened. Contradicting everything my manager said. And like, Okay. I'm like, well, my manager just fired me just now. He's like, what really? I'm like, yeah, bro. He's like, I'm, you know, I'm like, I'm really sorry. And, uh, so, um, yeah. So, um, it, it got really bad where like locals just like, were like, just pushed me out of there. Like I kept on having these bioweapon attacks where my nose with a, with, like with a respirator, with my car fan, like running me wasting four fifty a month on my car running going to Costco, even though it's 10 cents cheaper on like fuel, always leaving my car running, always moving, just sleeping in my car. And just when like the air, like the air in my, in my nose gets plugged up, I can't explain it, but there's like, I'm being followed and people will park. And all of a sudden my, my nose gets clogged up. And every three days I'm making videos of like this long, hard, which seems to be spray foam insulation, but I'm not a scientist. I'm just trying yeah. to, I'm just trying to do like the science and just move, move and move and move. Cause like, I'm only one person. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I like, I'm making these videos yeah, of this. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, like I'm making these videos and like, I'm using like the same napkin and I'm like, what, it, like, this isn't, I like, I've never had health issues ever. Like I, you know, so, you know, like I've never had like, like nose, like stuff like build up in my nose before. And I'm like, I don't think other people, like I'm going to the doctor and they're like, well, that's common. Like, you know, like, like, after the end of work, like I, I, I blow my nose and like stuff comes out. I'm like, no bro, your, your nose does not look like this. This is not normal. So I'm, I ended up moving to Alberta and just wrongfully terminated again. And then I'm like, okay, well let's just like, if I'm going to have to live in my car and I'm going to be tortured, like where, where's the nicest place in Canada, right? Where, where is it? It's going to be the cheapest place for me to live, right? Where it's like, it's not minus 40 in, in Alberta, right? Snow up to my ears. So <laughs> I ended up, I ended up just Googling like, the warmest place in Canada. It was, uh, Victoria, BC. I'm like, let's, let's just go there. So I literally just put it in my GPS. I went to Vancouver. I stopped there and I was in Stanley park and, uh, it was like, I don't know, like 7 PM and, uh, ended up, uh, ended up taking my GPS right, right down to the ferry. I'm like, 
oh, you need to you, you need to hop on a boat to get to the island. I, I just wasn't using my brain. I, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that you had to like take a boat to go to the island of Vancouver or to, um, to Victoria. So I ended up like showing up at like the ferry terminal at like, I don't know, like, like 9 PM or something like that. And, uh, just sleeping in my car waiting for the ferry for until like, uh, I think it was like 5 AM or 7 AM. And I'm talking to like a truck driver that was parked there cause he was working. And he told me all about the, all about Vancouver Island, really, really nice guy. He's like, oh, it's nice that you'll, you'll, you'll love it and stuff. You know, you, we, we get snow like once a week or one week every year. And, uh, so yeah, so, um, I just like start fresh. Just don't talk about it. Like Renee doesn't talk about anything. He just keeps on pushing forward. Right. So yeah. I, I ended up getting a job within like two days, started, started the drive drive a dump truck and uh turned out like for like mcintyre and sons and uh i need to get new tires for for my truck once and they ended up uh just again just playing playing games to just get me to quit start shorting me shorting me hours started uh i'm just trying to get out of debt right trying to get ahead trying to get ahead and i just can't get ahead so i'm just working as much as i can trying to and then like they really need people but they're just sending me home at like noon and giving me a half day. And I'm like, well, I'm not even 40 hours a week. And, and, uh, they end up taking, uh, taking apart my driver's seat when I, on like a, on, on the weekend and they took away all the cushion out of the driver's seat. So when I hopped in the truck, I started having like, the, <laughs> bro, <laughs> and, and this Mack truck, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm driving, trying to work. And it's like so painful at the end of the week. Like my back is just killing me. And I'm like, okay, I need a new seat because this isn't, this is like not good. So he ended up giving me like a new seat. And then I think like a week later, he ended up like firing me, just called me and fire me. So then, then they were trying to get, so I'm like, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that Renee does everything right. I won't speed. I won't go a kilometer over the speed limit. I won't, I'll cross, cross all my T's, dot all my I's and make sure that no blame can be put on me. Right. I'm like, no more tickets. I'm not, like, this is like serious because like, you know, like, like all this has happened. Right. And it's like, so anyways, so he, so, um, the guy that was loading me, um, ended up trying to like overload me and I was having friction with like other like drivers and like, I wasn't getting help. And usually like at the end of like, uh, when you go to, uh, to like a yard, like dump wherever you're going, They'll have like at the end of the day, they'll get like a guy to like scrape out your box if there's like clay and it's like really thick and like you can't use a shovel or like, the, like, like your box is just like suck full of clay. Um, and like, they yeah. don't want you using diesel in the back of your box. And it's not like environmentally friendly, friendly and shit. So, but then when I would get there, all the guys and all the construction guys would all like disappear. Like no one would scrape my box. So I would have to spend hours scraping, scraping my box. And then my boss wouldn't pay me for that. So I was like, okay, so there'd still be stuff in like the back of my box, but I wouldn't want to get overloaded. So I'm watching my, like, for like, for like my gauge for like my weight. And then like this young guy that's 20 years old was loading me this one day. And he's like, well, everyone else is, uh, gets like 10 buckets. Why am I only giving you eight? I'm like, he, and he don't want to hear it. Like, you don't want to like, I can't explain to it cause he's busy and he's being, being, he's just being rude to me. Right. And like, I don't want to get like a ticket cause C, 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 B, S, C or. I forget like the, like the ministry here. I don't want them pulling me over and like giving me a ticket. Right. So I I've spent the last 10 years having like a squeaky clean record. Like, like no, like no, no infractions and just trying to get my insurance down. Um, cause I like, I live in my car. I need insurance. So, um, so, uh, anyways, I have a video on my Twitter account on me talking, my boss calling me, firing me and saying that there's just complaints. People are complaining and, uh, and, uh, me talking to the kid, like after my boss gets fired, and I parked the truck. I go back there with my car and he's like, you just have a bad attitude. I'm like, bro, what? He's like, yeah, you're showing me the bad attitude right now. And he ends up, he, he, he ends up turning his, turning his, or his, his, his unit where he almost clips me in this solid, solid metal steel, like of this thing almost hits me with it. And like, I'm like, what the heck? So just pushed away, like, oh, well, just go away. And I remember McIntyre and Sons when I needed, like, new tires one the one day. 
because I don't want to get a ticket. We were in Nanaimo and he took me to like this trailer park and Kevin McIntyre, he, ta- he told me, he's like, yeah, this is the Hells Angels like yard. Like, what? yeah, so like, so this hell, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to like look for trouble here. I'm trying to just, I'm getting away, moving, moving, like always on the move. Like, can it, I, I don't want any problems. So like, out of nowhere, this new boss, this new employment, out of like far away from, from my hometown, Hell's Angels just keeps on popping up. So I'm not trying to like talk about this shit. Like people are like yeah. showing up on my door. Like, like people are talking about it to me. Like, I'm like, I never even ask questions. I'm like, I just, just quiet sitting in, sitting in, in his brand new Dodge Ram F like 1500. And he's like, oh yeah, like this guy, he's like in this trailer park that he has a trailer at the back. It's like a U shape. He has it at the back corner and at the front, the front trailer of like the main gate, this guy with a bunch of rings and tats and stuff, this old guy, he's like, yeah, he thinks he's hell's angels. And I'm like, uh, okay, well, I, like, I don't care. Like, what, just take me back to my car so I can go back to like, go back to work. So oh, yeah. like, this is when uh, my, my, like, my my truck was getting new tires and he picked me up and he had to like take me to this trailer for some reason so anyway so he ended up uh firing me there because he's like uh yeah like people were just complaining about your name i'm like all right so uh, i ended up getting a job at uh coca-cola and i i tried to get a job at coca-cola in saskatoon and i landed a job at coca-cola in victoria it's like must be my lucky day i always have the luck of getting these good jobs and just me pushing forward. Thank, thank baby Jesus for, uh, for the website. Indeed. Um, like it's <laughs> right, bro. It's so easy to get a job. Now you just go on indeed. And it's like, you don't need to know yeah. anyone. You just go on there. It tells you what's available. Like fucking the internet's yeah. so great, bro. <laughs> so I ended up getting a job there and it, it seemed that like I, I hit the jackpot, bro, because the number one driver, the most senior driver there was born in 1986 which is the same year i was born bro we're like we're we're the same age brendan and the number two driver is his best friend from like high school and he was born in 1986 too and they're like the coolest guys ever bro and i'm like no freaking way so so brendan we just ended up like clicking we're just like he was just a really cool guy and he took me out on like a driver's test and uh he was like really blown away by my driving and like i'm I might be really, I might be bad. I'm, I'm not good at like a lot of things, bro. And I'm like, I'm not the smartest guy, but I'm the best driver out there, bro. I've been doing it for like my whole life. And that's one thing I'm really good at. And, um, I remember him going back there to my hiring manager, Daniel, Daniel Texera or whatever his last name is. Sorry if I'm misspelling that Dan's like, 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 he's like the, the standard Vancouver Island guy or like, like human of where he's like the nicest person in the whole entire world, which is common for like yeah. all of Victoria, bro. Everyone's so nice here. And uh, you like, you literally like, I'm from like uh, Ontario and like the busiest highways, like the 401 and you have to put your blinker on and then you have to like push your way over because people are honking at you, flipping you off and no one will let you over here in Victoria. If you're, if you're a truck driver, you literally put your blinker on for like a split second the whole world stops. People flash you, wave you over. It's like the, it's the, if you're truck, it, it, bro, it is the nicest place to drive. I was like blown away. I'm like, I love it here. <laughs> so, so, um, so yeah. So, um, Brendan, the number one driver told Danny, he's like, you have to hire this guy. And I'm like, oh, I'm so lucky, man. Like he's telling me like we get free, like we, we get free Coke products and stuff of, of like the bin and stuff. And, and everything was just so great. I was telling him like I like I'm in debt and I'm trying to get out of debt. So he helped me try to get out of debt. He's like, I'm gonna give you, cause like usually people like the old guys and like the senior guys want all the overtime, but in Victoria it's so beautiful here and people have like side hobbies and like people are into fitness and stuff and running and shit that people want to enjoy their life, bro, and just want to work their 40 hours and go home. So I was working all the overtime. He was giving me all his extra shifts. He was, he would, he, he would call in sick just to give me his, his shift, bro. He's like, I'm going to call in sick Friday. He's like, you can have my shift. So, so I was getting like his runs and I was, I was like, felt like the luckiest guy in the world, bro. I was like paying off my debt. Things were, things couldn't be better for me, bro. And I, I was making like amazing money. Uh, I think I was making like 35 bucks an hour. So, so like truck drivers here on the Island, like I'm used to making 20 bucks an hour. In, in Ontario, not getting overtime, 
and with like Coca-Cola, if you work over for like 44 hours or 40 hours, you get time and a half. If you work six hours, you get double time, bro, on 35 bucks an hour. I was like, with like benefits. Yeah, dude. So I was like, just so fucking happy. But yeah, Coca-Cola actually uh, offered me a job like um, maybe a year and a half ago, and I freaking passed it. <laughs> oh, really? What? Seriously? Yeah, yeah, to be a, a, a maintenance uh, technician. Because, um, well, so what I do at the airport, uh, I'm an electrician. Oh, true. So, um, a smart trade. Yeah, uh, yeah. So they had offered me a job, and I and I chose the airport instead. But uh, ever since then, I always hear good things about Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's a really good company, bro. Um. Yeah, no, um, so, so you like the airport? Oh, I love it, I love it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, 100%, I love it. So are you, <laughs> are you, uh, an, an electrician at the, at the airport? Yeah, so, so what I do is I work on the, the jet bridges, they come up to the airplanes to let the people on and off, I work on those. No way. And then I'll, yeah, then I also do emergency response whenever, uh, one goes down and there's a plane on it. I have to like haul ass over there and try to get it fixed and get it going, and it's it's stressful. Oh, so <laughs> so they really like you then, eh? Giving you all that responsibility? Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> well, well, at nighttime I'm in charge of nighttime shift, but um, you know we're we're in need of people, so it's, it's you know that's why I'm working so much and you know doing so many hours. But, um, yeah, um, I, I really love it. Workaholic. I can, I can respect that, bro. <laughs> yeah. Good for you, dude. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, so, um, we're at the 55 uh, minute mark. Um, oh, true. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, um, and cut it, cut it right now. But, um, I wanted to say if you want to come on for part two, I mean, I'm, I'm more than down to do that, bro. Okay, because... All right, because uh, in, in Victoria, I've finally proven all the things I'm saying about, hey, why is this always, like, why is something always bad happening to me? I've, I've finally proven yeah. everything, bro, on exactly what's happening. And and yeah, Brendan, the, <laughs> Brendan's like the number one driver. He, he, he actually can't drive anymore because he has eye problems now, which I think was from, since I'm talking about me being attacked, I was talking to the yeah. number two driver after I was after I was wrongfully terminated and Coca Cola had to end up paying me ten thousand dollars. He's now not the well, he I from from last time I heard he can't drive anymore. So I feel like the mobbing community went after him. So I'll just leave it at that. So if 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 you want to hear more, maybe there's a part two, bro. <laughs> oh, no, not for sure. There's gonna be part two because we're, we're gonna have to cover you know everything that you found out and why all this was happening. Because sure. because like the BC government has now taken away my 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 uh, class one driver's license too, bro. So we can talk about that. All right, awesome. All right, Renee. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. And uh, until next me. time, uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna talk again, man. Thank you. Have a good one. Later, bro. All right, bye.